pulmonary embolism is a sudden blockage in the pulmonary arteries, the blood vessels that send blood to the lungs. It usually happens when a blood clot in the deep veins in the leg breaks off and travels to the lungs. A blood clot that travels to another part of the body is called an embolus. When an embolus blocks a blood vessel, it's called an embolism. When a pulmonary embolus blocks blood flow to the lungs, this is what we call pulmonary embolism. The most common cause of a pulmonary embolism is the breaking off of a blood clot in the legs, deep veins, known as deep vein thrombosis, also known as DVT. Some of the symptoms include shortness of breath, chest pain, cough, leg pain, or swelling when it comes to pulmonary embolism. Today, on your favorite health TV talk show, the physicians will be talking about pulmonary embolism, the risk factors, the causes, symptoms, diagnosis, of course, treatment and prevention. Do stay tuned. We'll be right back. Every day and in every way, enjoy that I find support. Darabite hey. Nutritional Supplement is loaded with essential multivitamins, minerals, and natural ingredients that helps you to be at your best. Darabite from LB Pharma. Darabite, love yourself. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is your favorite health TV talk show, The Physicians, where your health is our business. Today on our show, we have the amazing global walking encyclopedia. No other person than Dr. Eugene Woso, a consultant cardiologist and the MD CEO of United Heart Hospital. Dr. Woso, you are welcome once again. So welcome. That time, that's right, that's right. Thank, thank you for having me. It's good to have you back here. It's good to have you back. And today we are talking on something very important pulmonary embolism. Um, I'm sure, you know, behind the scene, before we came on board, we talked about, you know, what are the things, what is the, you know, the current statistics and all that. But before we even dive into all that information, what's pulmonary embolism and what are the causes? Okay, thank you very much. Um, maybe what we can do is let's review the circulation. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Let's okay. review the circulation so that we understand. And, uh, mm. So the circulation starts with the heart. You want to use the heart? No? The heart, there's the heart, yeah. right? Yeah. Side. So, Good. it starts with the heart, and in the heart you have two upper chambers, smaller chambers, called the atrium, right atrium and left atrium, and then the Good. two lower, bigger chambers called the ventricle, the left ventricle and the right, right. ventricle. Yes. So, blood Blood from the heart delivers oxygen and nutrients to every part of the heart. So, blood picks oxygen in the lungs and it flows into the left upper chamber called the left atrium. And when the left ventricle is ready to receive the blood, blood flows into it. And then there is ejection of blood, which we call contraction that enters the aorta, which is the main artery that carries blood to okay. different okay. parts of, of, the the body. Body. of the heart, of the body. Right here, some go to the head and then turn around and go to different parts of the body. The blood continues in the arteries and the arteries divide into smaller branches Branches called arterioles. Arterioles will end in mm -hmm. tiny vessels mm -hmm. called capillaries. capillaries. So right there, blood and oxygen, nutrients move together, move to different parts of the body. Okay. And after the oxygen is used in the body, it returns into the venous, the small okay. veins that mm. carry artery back, back to the lungs. Yeah. Okay. okay. And those blood, uh, the blood there is very poor in oxygen and is actually called very blue, 
dark blue. Mm -hmm. And then it goes through the veins, going back to the heart. But this time around, it enters the right side of the heart. From the right side of the heart, it travels into the pulmonary arteries, which is the big the arteries artery. in the lungs, will now supply every part of the lungs. And as he's doing that, he's carrying a lot of carbon dioxide. In the lungs, the lungs release the carbon, the, the blood, you know, the carbon dioxide leaves the blood back into the lungs and pick up oxygen. oxygen. And then the circulation it starts, it starts continues. Again. So this is the circulation. Now, let's define what is em embolus and then embolism, and then we tie up pulmonary embolism. Um, and embolus is a blood clot inside a vessel. Okay, it could be inside an artery, it could be inside a vein, but for pulmonary embolism, we are talking about blood clot in the vein. And commonly, that blood clot is in the lower no, extremities, okay. the, the legs. When that blood clot breaks off, a piece of it now travels back to the heart, to the right side of the heart, and enters the arteries of the lungs, the pulmonary arteries, mm -hmm. and then will lodge in mm -hmm. one of the branches, yes. or sometimes in the main mm -hmm. branch, the pulmonary artery. Okay. When it does that, that's what you now call an embolism, mm -hmm. because now it is inside Sorry. the atrial valve, it's called pulmonary embolism. Okay. So pulmonary embolism, when it occurs, can actually be very deadly if the diagnosis is not made. It's one of those things you don't want to miss as a physician. You don't want to miss a, a heart attack, you don't want to miss aortic dissection, you don't want to miss pulmonary embolism. Because when you miss it, 30% of the people will die from it. <laughs> so it's a very common condition, very important. Now, how common it is? Quite common. We don't have a lot of statistics in Nigeria, but from the literature, in UK, for example, 60 to 70 per 1,000, 100,000 population. That's common. Hmm. Yeah. 60 to 70, 70 per 100,000 population. That's high. That, that's high. Okay. So, and also, 15% of people that suffer, um, um, that die after surgery, what you call post operative, 15% okay. is from pulmonary embolism. Post op. It's also common in pregnant women. In fact, in UK, the commonest cause of maternal mortality, women that die from childbearing, is from pulmonary, pulmonary embolism. So this is an important topic. And people, we doctors miss it because you don't think about it. The symptoms are not classic. It mimics a lot of things. So if you don't think about it, you're going to miss it. Okay. So now you just enlightened us about the flow, the blood flow from the the lung, the heart, the circulation, normally. And uh, do you want to just tell us about the risk factors? Okay. Um, we're going to do that. But let's first of all talk about the causes of pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary embolism. Um, okay. So the cause of a thrombus, blood clot in a vessel, there are three conditions that can lead to that. And with that, you can now see what the risk factors are. Number one is if you are immobile, you are not moving around, you are sedentary, okay, it encourages the blood to pool and that can lead to blood clot. That's number one. Number two is if there is trauma or damage to the vessel, okay, it could be from an accident or, or, surgery. or it could be from an infection. Mm -hmm that damages, you know, the inner lining of the blood vessel, the vein, that can predispose you. And then there are certain conditions that make the blood clot easily, abnormal clotting conditions. Some of it is inheritance. There are some people that have strong family history of blood clot, and they inherited, they are not making certain elements 
okay, that, that can prevent clots, you know, what we call protein C, protein yeah. S, factor 3 leading and uh, um, uh, anticoagulant factors. There are a lot of things, and antitrobin 3. So there are a lot of conditions that can predispose you to that. Mm -hmm. And also obesity. People that are extremely obese, they clot easily. easily. So those are the three conditions okay. that can cause a blood, blood clot. clot. So when you now, and the commonest site of the blood clot that causes pulmonary embolism is in the deep veins of the leg, Legs. what we call DVT, okay. deep venous thrombosis. In fact, up to 45% of pulmonary embolism arises in the leg. Okay. Okay. And also in the deep veins in the pelvis. The pelvis yeah. So these it are the commonest. Okay. okay. And the interesting thing also is that pulmonary embolism coming from the legs, most of the time, once they are above knee, they embolize. They travel to the lungs very wow. frequently. Now, 65% of thrombus or blood clot in the deep veins below the knee mm -hmm. are asymptomatic. People don't even, even know, know they have it. They have hmm. Okay. But the common symptom here is swelling, swelling and leg like pain. pain. Okay. okay. So these are the factors. But it's getting mm -hmm. hot and it's getting very interesting. It's obvious that this can happen to anyone, anywhere, irrespective of your job, irrespective of, you know, not even talking about whether you are highly educated or not educated because now there's a familiar history. Okay. You may be doing everything right, but because of familiar You're history, already at risk. You are already, already at risk. Let's keep it up with keep it up with the physicians. Have you ever heard of preliminary embolism? Have you ever had anybody who has experienced it? Have you witnessed anybody who all of a sudden is in traffic and the person just gives up? Maybe yeah. because of something and you don't even know even these days that you are staying in traffic for like three, three hours, hours. So not even moving we'll be right back after this short break do stay tuned no bro i don't know anything about it i don't know anything All about right. it bro. no no i don't, I don't know about yeah about that. every day and in every way Enjoy that I find support No matter the role you play You dream back some limit For you and me In your body Darabite Nutritional Supplement is loaded with essential multivitamins, minerals, and natural ingredients that helps you to be at your best. Darabite from LB Pharma. Darabite. Love yourself. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is your favorite health TV talk show, The Physicians, where your health is our business. With us in the studio is Dr. Eugene Musso, the MD CEO of United Heart Hospital and of course, a consultant cardiologist. And our topic for today has been pulmonary embolism. And he has been telling us a whole lot that you out there, if you haven't called your neighbor, it's a disservice to die your neighbor. Absolutely. Because at the at the point in time, you do you wouldn't know who is going to save you because he has talked about reason why people have pulmonary embolism. Family history is not that you have done anything wrong. It's not it's a village people are after you or spiritual attack because somebody in the family has had mm. the possibility of you having sedentary lifestyle. Don't be a potato couch, you know, couch potato rather. Sit down, Netflix, and chill. You won't want to do anything, and you just feel as if all oh, life goes on. You can easily have it. Are you the type that flies business class or first class only and say, oh, it's the business of those in economic class? No. You can have pulmonary embolism if you are not moving around and you've been on that flight for 8, 10, 11, 12 hours. And of course, obesity. This is no longer news. You are big, you are big, go take time out, lifestyle modification, make sure you take care of yourself. Of course, Dr. Uso, this is so important to us right now because we, we know that the you know, non communicable diseases is the, is the biggest discussion we are having these days. But like you said earlier on, pulmonary policy can easily be missed. If you don't think about it, likelihood you wouldn't make that diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So now we are talking about risk factors. I want you to elaborate more on that. And are there gender differences? Because now every time you call me, most of I'm always afraid. Because most of the things are like, 
more about women than men. Are there gender differences? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Let, let's complete that because um, risk yeah, yeah, risk factors. We have mentioned a few, but let's continue on that. Exactly. Now, females that take estrogen therapy, birth control pills, and certain treatment like tamoxifen for breast cancer. Oh that increases the risk of pulmonary embolism. Wow. And also, very important, people that have stroke or heart attack, at that period of heart attack and stroke, the risk of blood clots, even high. in their lungs, is very high. So people that you know, get admitted to the hospital, let's say they have pneumonia, and they stay in hospital bed. For, a while. For just a few days in the hospital bed, they can develop pulmonary embolism and blood clot. And that is why part of that is compression, you know, stocking, you know, and all that stuff. So those are some of the risk factors. Okay, so heart attack, stroke, and then people with heart disease, people with hypertension, people with lung disease, they oh. also at risk. Smoking increases oh. the risk of you know, blood clot. No, smoking is important. These are important risk factors for pulmonary embolism arising from blood clot, okay, commonly in the legs, okay. Now, there are people that do IV drugs or people that have a catheter. Let's, say, let's say somebody, you know, has a serious infection and they need to receive IV antibiotics okay. for about six I weeks. You normally time. leave a catheter yeah. in the vein yeah. here. Yeah. That catheter can form a blood okay. clot that you know, breaks off and travel into the lungs to cause pulmonary embolism. Whoa. For no so, cause. So okay. that can also yeah. happen. So there are a lot of causes, okay? Mm -hmm. Now we will talk about symptoms, and exactly. then diagnosis, yes. and then we talk about prevention. Exactly, yes. because you have to, you already talked about the the the, 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 the causes. Yeah. We talk about the risk factors. Now, if, our listeners are they're all waiting. So how how will how somebody? I I, I'm sitting in my house now. How will I know that it's actually a pulmonary embolism? What are the yeah. symptoms? Yeah, the the one of the chief symptoms of pulmonary embolism is chest pain. People come now, suddenly they develop a sharp chest pain, okay, and the pain is very severe, and sometimes it's not that severe, but it can also increase with taking a deep breath. You take a deep breath, it hurts. That's what we call pleuritic chest pain. So anytime you have chest pain, in part of your differential diagnosis, think about pulmonary embolism. Does it radiate anywhere? Okay. The pain? The, the pain, pain. Yeah. it could, it okay. could. But the important thing is you take a deep breath, it's and sometimes it does not radiate. Yeah. Okay. okay. Mm. So it, it, sometimes those symptoms don't go to school and be very classic. <laughs> so chest pain is good enough. The second one is shortness of breath. They have difficulty mm -hmm. breathing. Okay. It's a very common symptom of pulmonary embolism. Now, and also this, the symptoms also depends on the severity because if it is a big blood clot that is sitting on the main pulmonary oh, artery, yeah. they can actually faint, okay? okay. They can yeah. become very dizzy and have a low blood pressure. Right, sure. So the blood pressure drops and sometimes they collapse, okay? And if it's a big one, they can actually go into a cardiac arrest, yes. you know, from that. Another one is palpitation. Okay, the heart is you know beating very fast or irregular. That can happen. Okay, another another um, symptom will be like you know dizziness, as as I said, and resulting in fainting. Now sometimes people with pulmonary embolism, we just feel very weak and tired. And like they they want to take a short step, you know they are tired. In fact, they they try to climb the you know in their home one flight of stairs from That's ground right. floor, okay. they are panting, panting for breath and their heart you know, rate is very fast. So they start having you know, tachycardia, very rapid heartbeat. So it can occur in a variety of That's symptoms, right. as I said. Uh, but if you don't think about it, you're going to miss it. Yes, now, some people will come complaining that they have pain in their leg and they have a swollen leg and sometimes it's very hot and then you know you can you know that can help you put it together that mm. this might be a blood clot coming from the leg.
But as I said, some people don't even feel anything because it's asymptomatic. Yeah. They have a blood clot in the leg. The leg is not swollen. They don't have pain, but it's coming from the legs. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the typical presentation okay. of um, pulmonary embolism. Okay. So having said that, if you now put it together and based on your history and you're thinking it's pulmonary embolism, what you do next is to run some tests okay. to make a confirmation. Okay, so the test can start with chest x-ray. Some people with pulmonary embolism that has caused um, pul you know, um, pulmonary infarction. Infarction is that part of the lung that is deprived of blood, blood flow, supply. gets dead. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's what is infarction. So it might even look like pneumonia on a chest x-ray. You might think it's pneumonia, but it's actually pulmonary embolism. Mm -hmm. Okay, so chest x-ray can be important. Then the next one is ECG. ECG can show you some irregular heartbeat like atrial fibrillation. A pulmonary embolism can cause atrial fibrillation or what we call sinus tachycardia. Mm. So, and then echocardiogram is ultrasound of the heart. And if you have a good pulmonary embolism that is affecting the arteries of the heart, That's leading to pulmonary hypertension, mm -hmm. which means increasing the blood pressure in the vessels of the lung, mm -hmm. it can affect the right side of the heart. Mm -hmm. So the right ventricle becomes enlarged Lies. and sometimes can okay. fail. Okay. Large pulmonary embolism can also lead to heart failure okay. because of failure of the right ventricle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it wow. can also result in the tricuspid valve is the valve on the right, right side, side of heart well. between the right atrium, atrium and, and the right, right ventricle, that valve can start leaking blood wow. and mm. cause a heart murmur <laughs> from tricuspid regurgitation. Mm. So, but one of the best tests to do is what you call a lung scan, ventilation okay. perfusion lung scan. Unfortunately, we Did don't have we Nigeria? don't have a lot of that in Nigeria. I'm not even sure there might be. And it's quite expensive. It's quite expensive. expensive. So we don't have that. But yeah. in Europe or in America, um, VQ scan, ventilation perfusion scan, is a diagnosis. CT chest with contrast is okay. important. We okay. have it here in Nigeria. You can have a CT scan that can make that diagnosis. The only problem with CT scan with contrast is that. Your kidneys must be in good shape. Good shape. If you have, otherwise, if you have no problem. decrease in your kidney function, function. Don't then don't you, you don't want to take don't contrast don't because that can affect your kidneys. Kidney. Blood test. One important blood test is what we call D-dimer. D-dimer is a test that measures the breakdown of the blood clot. So if you have a blood clot, your body will try to break it down, yeah. and then your D-dimer will spike. Oh. Now, there are some people that have family history because in their family, in their genetics, they are not able to make certain proteins mm. that will know. prevent you from oh, clotting. Right. You can send for a lab test for confirmation to show that there is deficiency of wow. that. So protein C, protein okay. S, anti-thrombin 3, factor 3, factor 5 leading, you know, there are other lupus anticoagulant. There are a lot of other tests that you can pick up. Prevention is also part of treatment because exactly. you want to prevent it. Mm -hmm. So prevention comes in different ways. If you're admitted to the hospital, okay, they will make sure that sometimes we give them a small amount of blood thinner to make sure they don't clot. Okay. Sometimes we have compression stockings that you know intermittently it inflates and all that stuff. Okay. So these are some of that. Now people that are going for orthopedic surgery, very very important. Because they are okay. usually long stays. They are apart from that because of the and pain they don't the move. Pain. Okay, they try not so they to have move. To use all and this part of that is early physical therapy. Okay, okay. even with the pain, sure they are they forcing them to do physical therapy. Dr. Romano, I don't think we will ask Dr. Chukwu to come back again. I think he needs again. to come back. <laughs> and, yes, and also, yeah. they give them some of those blood thinners. Yeah. 
that they take even after they leave the hospital for a few weeks. Okay. Now, for us, we talk about bankers, sedentary lifestyle. You go to work, you are sitting on the computer. Please, every one hour, move. Get up and move. Even if you are not moving, just stand up. Standing is better than sitting. Thing. Okay. <laughs> stand up. Standing. Absolutely. Him knows where standing. If you are driving from, you know, Abuja to Lagos, break the journey and somewhere. back and no. exercise so, so what yourself. It is right okay. now. You have you are driving into you know workplace and how people that are working, whether remote or in the main office, and I think this is this has to be a special mm -hmm. episode mm -hmm. because we have quite a number of people that are working from, they home. Are working from home and they are even working in offices and they are in four, five, six hours of meeting yeah. and they are not getting up. Yeah. They will get the ticket, bring me tea, bring, but they are still sitting yeah, down you there. Move. I, 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 I you really, move. really, really want to appreciate you for this knowledge you have impacted, even in us, the physicians, and of course, and I'm sure our viewers have really taken a whole lot. But please, sir, when we call on you, we trigger some plenary embolism among Workers, yes. please. I want you to do us a favor because this is a very big thing for them, and we need to really you know, get you. people in life. Once you. again, thank you very much, sir. Thank you because time is not good. Yeah. Our friend. I feel really bad because I was so much enjoying this topic right now. In fact, I was doing my self diagnosis. I said, Hey, 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 I have not been breathing well some time. Oh, are you sure something is not happening somewhere? Because after now, I'm going to see Dr. Wonsa, I sit down with you. I say, My dear senior like, but tell me something maybe there's something wrong somewhere so that I can quickly no like you said prevention is always better than cure. please don't forget what he said it's very very important you may be doing everything right but because there's a family history there's a likelihood that you may have preliminary policy not that you are doing certain things wrong my name remains Dr. Nice so Kadri until next time remain blessed my name is Dr. Martina Aguirre. Till next time, stay blessed. But remember to follow us on our social media platforms. If you want to be part of this program, just go to our website and fill the form. Till next week, stay blessed.